Hi, my name is Jerry Hesch. I'm a physical therapist. I work part-time in Henderson, Nevada. And this is a screen on a client who came out to see me from Nebraska. And she was contemplating getting a sacroiliac joint fusion. She is fused from T9 down to S1. And about two months after her second fusion, a revision, which was very successful, she was trying to unclose and uh, was not sitting down. She was stork standing, leaning against the wall. And that brought on a tremendous pain in the region of the uh, right SI joint and also in the pudendal distribution. And so we are looking at her and I screened her a short while ago. We're gonna focus on the findings very quickly. All right, so her pelvis is stuck in right side glide fixation. And that was obvious when she was standing. I try as I may, I cannot really take up the slack there. There's the slightest movement. And if I double that force, nothing happens. Now, if I reach over, you can see that I can easily draw the pelvis to the right. And then it has a stopping point in which I've taken up the slack. But now I can spring it a little bit further. And you can see the bounce. And now I let go. All right? Otherwise, um, from the front, her pelvis feels uh, mobile on the left. It, it feels like when I spring that ilium that there is normative uh, movement of the pelvis. When I do the right side and I slow it down, you know what? I really cannot take up the slack. Um, and if I really spring it, what's really happening is it's not normative motion. It doesn't look like the pelvis, you know, deforming in a kind of a corkscrew manner. Okay? What's happening is it's actually translating in the transverse plane over to the other side. Okay? So her left ilium is, is, is coming up anterior medially. If I really slow it down, I realize that, you know, I really cannot take up the slack. And if you can't take up a, the slack, you are not able to spring it. And that's consistent with everything we found when she was lying on her stomach. If you could roll over, please. What we found was on the left side, she had normal mobility. So if I take up the slack, pushing on the ischial tuberosity, I can then spring her, and you can see her bounce. And now I let go. All right? When I push inferiorly, I can take up the slack, I can spring it repeatedly, and now I let go. On this side, I can't. I cannot take up the slack in any direction. From inferiorly, I cannot. I cannot take up the slack. I'm putting 20 pounds of force, even more, and I cannot. Positionally, the right ischial tuberosity is posterior. The PSIS is posterior and superior. Now here's an anterior rotation spring test. Moves on the left. On the right, does not move at all. What doesn't fit is the fact that the right ischial tuberosity is very medial. If, this is a, if the crease on her pants is midline, this is what it looks like. The medial portion of the right ischium is about an inch away from midline. On the left, it's two and a half inches. Now, when I spring, the ischium on her left, it really doesn't spring. When I spring the ischium medially on the right, that doesn't spring either. At that point, I think we're going to need to reassess everything because we know that the pelvis undergoes a couple of permutations. This is Jerry again. We finished treating her pelvis. And our findings are really remarkable. We did restore the ability of the pelvis to translate to the left. So that when I take up the slack, I, I maintain it and I pause. And then I induce an additional spring and it moves and it recoils with integrity. That's part of the good news. Now, when I attempt to take up the slack and rotate her right ilium posteriorly, there is no movement. 
I absolutely cannot take up the slack. When I push inferiorly on this iliac shelf, the anterior shelf, I cannot take the slack up. On this side, yep, take up the slack and then spring it. All right, could you line your stomach, please? What I conclude is that her right SI joint is not moving at all. And so that means it's fused. When I take up the slack under her left ischium, you can see I can take up the slack and I can spring it. On the right side, try as I may, I'm putting 30 pounds of force and I cannot take up the slack at all. And the same thing, when I spring inferiorly, actually the whole pelvis moves a little bit. So it looks like I've taken up the slack a wee bit, but beyond that, there is no movement. And I'm at 20 pounds, and now I'm at 30, and I'm going to 40, and no, nothing. Whereas a normal person, her body type and such, at 20 pounds, you would have seen movement. Now when you try and rotate the ilium anteriorly, it is like solid bone. Okay? When I come over, I find the PSIS. I find the rim of the... I find the posterior shelf of the ilium. Put the heel of my hand there, I can take up the slack, and I can spring it. Walk over to this side, PSIS is here, okay, the rim, brim, right here. I absolutely cannot take up the slack. So the, the therapy that I did balanced her pelvis as a solid structure, but I was not able to restore any movement inside her SI joint. Nonetheless, her pelvis is more balanced now, so the soft tissue tone inside the pelvis is more balanced. That includes the pelvic floor and the rotators um, such as the piriformis, gemelli, etc. She may get better because maybe we've taken off some mechanical tension and compression on the pudental nerve and on these other um, nerves. There's a couple of gluteal nerves that come out of that notch, etc. Time will tell, but there is just no way that I can create motion there. And over here, definitely, I can create motion. So I think that we have a fused right SI joint and I will stop here. I will see her again tomorrow. I'll see her the following day. And she does have back home. She has a CAT scan that looks at her low back and goes down, I think, as low as S2. I wish it went a little bit lower. I'm going to bet we're going to see some bridging inside that joint. And the radiologist would have been focused on the lumbar spine and focused on the fusion. And um, once in a while, once in a great long while, they'll miss something on a film, and this might be such a case. Um, so I'm going to stop now. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jerry Hash. I'm a physical therapist. I specialize in the SI joint. I work part-time in Henderson, Nevada, and I have laryngitis. This is a client who came and saw me from Nebraska, and she was contemplating getting a sacroiliac fusion on the right side. She had severe scoliosis and as a result of that she has had two extensive fusions and right now she has a tremendous amount of hardware in her body from T9 down to S1 and it was necessary. The scoliosis was very severe and um, the surgery was necessary. You, know, you can't fault the surgery. Um, she's had a pretty severe debilitating pain, um, which commenced a couple of months after the second surgery, doing something very simple. She was putting on clothing. She was out shopping and trying on clothing. Rather than sitting down and putting on pants, she was leaning against the wall and lifting up one leg and something happened.